viewers, welcome to this Statistical Meeting on Recent Corporate Law Cases. I request Pramod Aragri, our Vice Chairman of the branch, to escort our speaker of the Sundaray Sanji and present it to the case. It's my privilege to introduce the speaker of the day, Sundaresh. I welcome all the members to this uh, statistical meeting on corporate law, uh, recent cases on corporate law. And it's my privilege to introduce the speaker of the day, Sundaresh J. He is a thought leader, board strategist and compliance guru. A compliance guru with over three decades of experience, he leads a firm that specializes and advises in governance, compliance and sustainability matters for clients that include Fortune 500 companies. He has trained more than 100 company secretaries in the last three decades. The firm has created more than 500 due diligence and audits in the last 20 years and has been recognized with awards best full-fledged corporate law firm for 2023 and most trusted corporate law due diligence firm for 2022 by APAC legal awards hosted by APAC inside of UK. He has trained more than 10,000 board members and board aspirants since 2006 on various matters and he is rated as most here an active contributor on board matters in LinkedIn. He has been helping many board aspirants to learn and pass the proficiency test. He is conducting a 10 module session on BR, SR and ESG with the sole objective of finding the, a home for ESG. In a, as in many corporates and ensuring India has its right place on the global ESG arena rightfully. He has been passionately pursuing his speaking since 1991 in India and abroad on corporate governance, CSR, legal environment for boards and mock board meetings. He is a world traveler. With this brief introduction, I welcome uh, Jay Sundarajan sir to, uh, and uh, the floor is open for the discussion. Thank you. Good evening and uh, welcome to today's session and uh, happy to be here sharing the third edition of uh, Kata Sangama. Just to take you through what we discussed in the previous session, which is 2020. These were the cases that we discussed from a corporate viewpoint. Then we discussed in 2022 some of these cases which included most importantly the uh, Nagappan Swarnalata story which was uh, Pati Patni or Chartered Accountant. You know? Never get into the uh, real time family affairs of a person. And that is one story which was mind blowing because it opened lot of issues pertaining to the DSC where the chartered accountant helped the husband incorporate the company which is Nagapan and the chartered accountant did not know that there was a divorce petition pending and incorporation got over and the wife sued the professional. And uh, the logical end to that story is the company itself was struck off by the rest of companies. So this can be as dangerous as this. And of course, we ended that particular session with IL and FS. And uh, that is where we saw, you know, Deloitte partner, uh, uh, you know, Sen getting into problems. And there is a huge big uh, verdict which is available, which you can go through in NFRA. Today what I am going to discuss is very simple, art of leaving, not living, art of leaving, how should a chartered accountant leave, should the statutory auditor wait for the ship to sink, I am going to produce some live wire, what is that, resignation letters. I will also tell you blunders which has happened in the system and most importantly what we are going to discuss is the case pertaining to 
why Jews? Okay, today's big story is why Jews. Small stories, there are a lot of cafe coffee day and a lot of these stories are there. But the big story is that of why Jews. Okay. Now, why great resignation and why the chartered accountant? Because timing is very, very important when it comes to an exec. Should the statutory auditor leave in between, leave in the end, leave after the investigation by SEBI or MC or whatever, when should the chartered accountant quit as statutory auditor from a company? That is the basis as far as we are going to see and very difficult actually, you know. This is the statistics. This month alone, I am talking only from a listed company point of view. There were 64 resignations out of which there were 13 resignations where you would find the most lame excuse which is the fees that was paid by you is not commensurate to our audit. Now that takes us to a beautiful point. At what point of time should the statutory auditor have asked for the fees? Correct. Now today if you really look at the corporate world, what is happening is the auditor gets appointed and then there is a simple resolution which says fees the shareholders will approve and say the fees will be decided by the board from time to time. Now looks like in the next one or two years this is all going to change. Huh? The shareholders will have to make the auditors commit. For example, if the fee is fixed at 10 lakhs, maybe they will come out with some resolution which would say 10 lakhs with an annual increase of 10%, 20%, whatever it is. So that cannot give you any reason to leave stating that the fees was low or was not comments, right? Now let us just look at uh, why auditors reside. Okay, I mean that is a very, very important point. The reasons that has been cited by some of these chartered accountant firms and of course today there is a lot of reference to Deloitte now. I mean, my disclaimer is it is not my opinion, it is not, it just accidentally came. Where there are five, six cases where Deloitte has resigned uh, during the last few months. And that actually gave us a lot of uh, inputs. I mean, thanks to my brilliant research team at the office, you know, these people have put together this whole concept. Now, understand. The resignation can be account of personal reasons. Now it is not possible. You cannot state you are resigning. Whether you are an independent director or a statutory auditor, the words personal reason cannot be used by a Chartered accountant who is a statutory auditor. That then leaves us with health. Can a CA say ill health, bad health? I mean, we'll see. I mean, all of these things are coming out. Prior commitments. Now, this is another funny statement which you can use where you can say that I have prior commitments, but that is also now disapproved because if you had a prior commitment, why did you take up this audit? This is the question that the regulators are asking. You hate the promoters. I mean, that's obvious, right? For various reasons, because uh, like by Jews. Okay, why on by Jews? Uh, all of you know this background of the story of by Jews. I mean, not there are a lot of problems. I mean, you will see some funny videos and all that. No, 1.2 billion dollars, which is translating to roughly. 10,000 plus crores. Tell me, as an auditor, can there be an instance where the auditor does not know who the investor is? Is it possible? Theoretically, practically, is it possible? No, I mean, it's a question. So, is it possible? It, it's not possible, right? Then how did Deloitte not know who the investor is? You know the funny story in that? Do you know who Ravindran is? 
the promoter of Baijus. Baijus Ravindra, of course. Now if I say only Ravindra, nobody knows. It's Baijus Ravindra, right? Baijus Ravindra. What? Baijus as per Sleva. Baijus. Baijus, ha. So it has become Baijus Ravindra. So this Ravindra also does not know. Is it possible? No, I mean, practical. I mean, this is a story which is burning. Is it possible that a promoter of a company also does not know who the investor is? It's not possible, right? I mean, let's see. I mean, that is where I would need your help to crack it. So you hate the promoter, okay, for not telling you who the investor is. And you decide. Promoter hates you. Now, this is the reverse, right? I mean, a promoter can hate a chartered accountant or a statutory auditor, and that also turns out to be a resignation. If it is not a resignation, the other thing available is a removal. Now, removal you will not hear very often pertaining to an independent director and a statutory auditor because it's something which I call a Brahmastra. You should not use it very often because that has lot of ramifications. Next is of course directors hate you, then you hate the company, normal or not. Then there are a series of vices, right? Vices would mean I need more fees or there is an ego trip. Anything can go wrong, right? Now, listen to these stories very carefully. Huh? So at least this I will try and cover in my given time uh, frame. By June, company tax, the right results. Company tax, that 1.2 billion is still a mystery. Deloitte is gone. Adani, investigation starts. That report, no? world famous report in India. Right? Deloitte reason. Now that is why I keep on saying there is a lot of Deloitte name coming up. Okay. Then there is CCD, Cafe Coffee Day. No, this is another very unique case. SEBI investigates. NFRA finds that the chartered accountant firm is at fault and then there is name say close to my name say Sundaresh who is finished. One person. Auditor, again I'm sorry, sorry, resigns and investigation starts. So understand, today this auditor resignation is becoming a very big topic because the share prices of the company has started falling. Huge, unheard of, one person. It is, it is shaken up the system, right? How? So let us see. I mean, I know these are all nice uh, stories for me to uh, look at. Now let me take you systematically. Okay. So here is a listed company where uh, Rajani Mukesh, you know, one of the uh, CA firms, have resigned stating due to ill health. Is it a valid reason? I just told you, no. Personal cannot be used. But if you are ill, I mean, there are even mockery coming up actually, you know, how they resign. So, ill health is a perfect reason, don't worry. Now, look at this. This is heights. This is by Maheshwari and Co. in a company called Scar Knows. That itself is like Surpatrina company actually, you know, Scar Knows. BC schedule and heavy workload, I am not able to continue. Got it? Next. This is the next company, Spice Islands. Here the auditor says, peer review number of the firm has expired. This is the heights of comedy, right? I mean, you, how can you be running a firm without even knowing that your firm uh, peer firm expiry is coming up. Okay, I mean, maybe it's a genuine reason also, but look at the tragedy. Next. Now, this is what I am saying is not allowed. Uh, whenever you have time, try and do some more research. This Boruka Aluminium I found is a company which had a turbulence in 2019. So, understand one thing very clearly. Resignation of an auditor does not come overnight. There are lot of issues which go behind this resignation. There is also a call called a commercial call. Even after the commercial call fails, negotiation fails. 
So it's nothing. So that is why one lovely sub question to you uh, think. Can an auditor say, I want to resign with immediate effect? Can you let go an auditor who says immediate effect? That is, today an auditor resigns and tomorrow you want to send them home. Is it possible? But there are instances, there are cases. I will show you some of the Deloitte letters where they say that we have been telling you over a period of so many days that we want to resign. Hence, we are now very firm that our resignation should be with immediate effect. Now, this is another funny incident, right? Due to insufficient stuff. So why did you take up the audit? That too, you are talking only about listed companies. Huh? I am not even covering any unlisted companies. Listed companies. Facts. Now these are all reality. All this, whatever I showed you was general. No, real. Now look at this. Fantastic. This is for a company called Taparia Projects. Now it's very clear that the controlling interest has changed and we are not able to sync with the new management which is controlling. We are getting out. Perfect. Perfect. Next. This is another lovely one. Due to the change in the registered office. Now why will you as an auditor go out? Just because the registered office is changing, which means there would have been a turbulence and the reason cited may be a silly reason to get out, but compared between generally speaking and the fact speaking, this is a better reason. Now legally speaking, okay, now what, what is the letter means legally speaking? Now look at this. There is a RBI guidance and some uh, statutory form, uh, auditor's form has come out and said our form is not competent enough to handle the audit because of certain strictures from Reserve Bank of India. Clear? One of the reasons. Look at this. Limitation imposed and our ability to conduct the audit, we are resigning and going. Clear? Now, there is another company where they say additional disclosure. This is what I said. So there are three instances where you find NBFCs where the chartered accountant has come out and said we are not in a position to handle this. So we are getting out. Now remuneration speaking. Now this is what is very very funny again. There are two instances of Deloitte itself. Okay. Now uh, in this company they are saying increase in our remuneration having regard to the efforts involved for increase in the scope of statutory audit. Audit committee has not accepted our proposal for increase in the fees. Hence, we are resigning. Clear? And look at that, the trail mails. There is a 20th June reference, there is an August 8th reference, which means they are connected, which means they want to bring that immediate effect into relevance. Now, this is again another Deloitte company, which is a, a Trident Limited. Now, here again look at the reasons which are cited, very simple. Current remuneration will not be commensurate with the efforts. And they have quoted our ICA standards and all that. And they are gone. Clear? So, I am just setting the tone pertaining to the art of leaving. And how, not the art of leaving, art of leaving. Which is how you need to prepare and what is the defense that you would take before you move out of a particular company. Okay, now the, the last one, this is another KPMG, which, sorry, the price order house letter, which says adopting cost reduction measures, the company has admitted that they will not be able to pay the fees for 2024. So these are all remuneration pertaining to resignation. So generally speaking, legally speaking, remuneration speaking, so you can speak any language in the resignation letter but it will be connected with one of these issues. Now my takeaway for you is never wait for the ship to sink. I mean all of us are trained but we should understand we should jump out of the sinking ship. Please don't wait. Now, this is a, a company called Brightcom. Now look at this. This is the right way of doing it. The moment SEBI investigation was launched in the company, auditors pressed the escape button. 
Understand? This is called the stink to smell to stink theory. If you as chartered accountant cannot smell what is going to rot, then very difficult for you to jump out when the stink starts. Okay? Now, Adani, another lovely case. Okay? Now, very simple. Now, look at this. Here, the defense the auditor has taken is not to cite the report. They have said, you have not given me audit of all your companies. Hence, we are assigned. Now, one more reason, some other uh, CFO has cited one more. The material subsidy was not given to me. The material subsidiary company is not given to us. So, we are not able to assess the <laughs> damages we are leaving. Are you getting it? Now, looks like from a CA point of view, the entire group should be audited by a single CA firm. Is it a reality? Will it happen? Billion dollar question. But reason cited to jump out of the ship are some of this. Okay. This is lovely, lovely case. Now, please understand. Why choose? Now, this is also a Deloitte company. That's what I said. Five, six, seven, eight companies, Deloitte, you know. So, now, understand this problem very carefully. The question to you is, should the auditor jump out before the directors or directors jump out of the sinking ship before the auditor? You know, everything is a, everything is a case. Who should jump out first? Yeah, no. If you wait for the directors to jump out, how will you get out? Who will you submit the resignation to? Correct? It's all... Jet Airways is another classic case. KPMG was the auditor of... Uh, from right of Jet Airways. On August 18, 2019, Naresh Goel goes to the balcony and says, my company is shut. So I keep asking in all the forums, you know. Tomorrow, if Mr. Mukesh Ambani attains Nirwana, can he shut the company? Why not? This is not fair. If Naresh Goel can shut the company, Mukesh Bhai can also shut the company. Thak. Single day. No, yes or no? You are the better judge, right? Can you shut down or not? You will say practically impossible, that, this. Understand, friends. Jet Airways in this country is the precedence for anybody, any entrepreneur to get into the Buddha moment. Enlightenment, Nirvana, and shut the company next day. So don't think something is permanent at all. Did we do something to Jet Airways? No. Has anything been done? Nothing has been done. People say it's in coma, some people say it's in ventilator, some people say it's kidney failure. I don't know whatever failure. End of the day, is that company there? No. SBI lost all the money? No. Okay. So understand. So, please understand this point, which is, this company, there was a delay in the financials for more than two years now. So, just to give you, because I, uh, I, I, I love to talk for director related, 164, if the directors had stayed back for one more year, vacation of office, career is doomed, so they jumped. These guys also jumped. Clear? So please understand the financial reasons was a perfect reason. But, 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 I'll come to that. Okay. Now this one person again, they look at this. Uh, now I can't cite the names and all that. You can read it for yourself. Okay. So it was not deliberate. It was not deliberate. It was the flow with which we were doing research and companies kept on coming at you. So this is another unique case. Multiple auditors changing within a very short span of time. But how can the next auditor take a chance? Okay, the third auditor, how can they take the chance? No, something is really fishy 
when it comes to multiple auditors coming in and going out of a listed company. That's why there are a lot of investigations around which is launched. Okay. Now, look at this. In this case, the auditor has said lack of cooperation. As we go along, I'll tell you what was the lack of cooperation and all that, the GST need and all of those things. Okay. So now, this art of resignation, where I am coming from is, look at this. This was the biggest googly I found. A company called Alcom Laboratories, the independent director is resigning, citing that one of his relative may become the partner of KPMG. Unheard of, huh? I mean, is, this can never be a great reason for you to, I mean, this is like holier than thou type, you know? Something which is beyond corporate governance and all that, that I have come across, but there is a reason, okay? Now, from a senior point of view, would this be Bieber? Bieber is going through a lot of crap, right? Now, I found out this particular statement which is, substantial doubt exists about the company's ability to continue as a going concern. Should the auditor jump out or not? He have to. Otherwise, you will land up like jet airways, right? Look at this. This is the signal where you get to jump out of that particular ship. Clear? Now, this is another law. This is PwC resigning in PPM. Now, this is what I told you. That particular subsidiary, if I am right, correct? Yeah, material subsidiary was not given to us, so we are resigning. Uh, I just produced the letter for your purpose. Now, so this is the case where we ended the last Katha Sangama 2.0 in 2022. Now, what was this particular takeaway? Very simple, fantastic order. When you get time, please go through multiple hundred of hundreds of pages. One of the best uh, reports so far. Now, here we found that Deloitte was the audit firm, and then Udyas, Udyan Sen was the partner, and then this is what happened, and finally, this is what is the order, which is 25 lakhs was levied on the partner and the partner was debarred for a period of seven years. Now, Pramod just shared me today evening, Telangana High Court has come out with a order. The order says, NFRA does not have powers to try cases which are prior to 2018. Stupidity, right? I mean, when you have formed something, how can you say the cutoff is only after you are born? Which means, ROC can never have powers to prosecute us for anything prior to 2014. I mean, something I am trying to connect. This is going to go to the Supreme Court, but you cannot dispute that. Because NFRA is NFRA and these people are there to go ahead and look at lot of these deviations is why that particular forum is formed. Now, why this? Just keep looking at the slides, just try to follow me. I will take you through in a very systematic manner. Of course, the author is sitting here, Gayatri, who has done this. I am only, you know, she is a scriptwriter, I am only the director. So, listen to this. This is where the starting point happened. Where the auditor quit the company and went. Then we said, let us go and investigate why all the, the directors, all the directors went, which is the outside directors, and the auditor, why did they go? Now, why did the auditors resign? Because the remuneration was low? No. Because directors resigned? No. Because accounts were not getting finalized? To some extent, yes, because that is what was quoted in their le uh, letter. Because promoters were siphoning off money or the money is disappearing from the system? Maybe. But, you know the real reason? Because there was a ghost in the company. Now, don't take this ghost lightly, huh? right from our NSC. Remember, huh? that case also it is the NSC. Forgot, huh? 2000, three years back. National Stock Exchange was run by a ghost. Who is the ghost? Babaji sitting in Himalayas. A ghost, man. 
Till today, do you know who that ghost is? No. Till today, we don't know who was running the largest stock exchange in the country. So, ghost. I'll try and bring one separate session on only ghost stories in corporate. Okay. So, who is this ghost? My God. This is the investor who has put 1.2 billion dollars which is equivalent of 10,000 crores plus. Listen to this very carefully. How did the money come? There is a particular instrument which is available. If I can put the equivalent of this, it is like a debenture getting listed in an Indian stock exchange. I'm just very loose uh, connection I'm just trying to make because you should know what it was. Okay. Now, this was a debt instrument. Now this is the complication which is there inside the Baiju acquisition which is there. This is just for you to understand the background. Now what all acquisitions they did and where they are. Uh, Akash, I mean I don't know how many of you remember, one of the biggest, biggest acquisitions which I don't know whether it pulled them back, whether it lifted them. Okay, 2020 the landscape of Baiju's was completely different. They were, look at this, my god, the next slide will go bonkers. Heights of stupidity, right? Today it is at 22 billion dollars. Who says so? Who says so? Ravindran says so. <laughs> no way. Valuation is in the eyes of the beholder. Right? It's a myth. Right? Now, so from 20, uh, 2018, just watch, from a 3.6 billion to 2023, meteoric, it is about 22 billion. Right? Now, while on that, also understand one small takeaway on valuation, I just recently heard. Valuation has two components one is the value, another is the price. Valuation is never, all this is bakwas, right? I mean, whatever they start up valuation, it's all not the valuation of the company. It is the price that an investor wants to put in the company. Got the point? If, if the last closed deal in Vijus was, say, about a lakh and 36,500 per share, who says so? Think. Okay, now, so this is what is this valuation and this is what is the myth. Now all this happened and then finally 2020 went by, the corona faded off, 2021 my children started getting back to school, online, uh, only Instagram became good because kids started watching Instagram, they stopped looking at Baiju's. Now, it takes them to the next level where there is a cash burn. For getting this cash burn rectified in 2021, this person taps US market with a 1.2 billion debt listed instrument. Clear? Debt listed instrument. Okay, now, uh, of course, it's called term loan B. In short, uh, just remember TLB. Okay, this TLB is what is the uh, instrument that we are actually talking about. And this instrument was issued at 5.5% interest. So far clear? So, I mean, you become the judge, you know, Janta Ki Adalat, you be the judge who is right, who is wrong, okay? So, no, 1.2 billion at 5.7% uh, of 5% is what is the deal that was struck. Investor pays the money. So far clear? No problem? Now, the story starts. From there, this ghost transfers this 1.2 billion worth of shares to a real entity called Redwood. Got the point? Redwood is a real entity which is published, which you can figure out who it is. Now, which means the 5.5% interest, Alpha Inc. is a step down subsidiary of Baijus. Step down means India, there is one more layer 
and that layer is alpha. So alpha is the company which has raised the uh, 1.2 billion. Now, did Ravindra know that the company has received 10,000 dollars? I mean, uh, 10,000 crores? Obviously. Why would I mess with Messi? Messi, Messi, you know. Yeah. Huh, I'll come to that story. So, he knows, right? She knows. Who is she? Divya Bhogal. Everybody knows that money has come. Now, what has happened is there are two players out here. There is a company called Glass Trust and there is a character called Timothy. Now, who are they? These are the characters who bridge this 1.2 billion from the ghost to Redwood. So far clear? Now, when you track this story, you, you will find it very interesting once you get into the details. I am giving you the characters in the story. Clear? Now, 2022, 5.5% interest became due. Alpha in default. So far good? Is it good, bad? Uh, the default? Bad. Baikus is saying, Ravindran is saying, no, 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 no. We can't, uh, we don't know who Redwood is, we can't pay this money. Now, Redwood, what they do? Out of anger, increases this 5.5% to say 10%. That is where the dispute is, is what you are all thinking when you read the newspaper. Where is the actual dispute? Actual dispute is payment of interest of 5.7% on 1.2 billion. Got the point? Now the latest twist to the whole story is, I don't know who the ghost is. I don't know where the money has come from. Can this ever be a possibility? Is it a possibility? No. The Lord. Okay. Right now, imagine. Who all would have known? Ravindra, Divya, this glass company, Timothy, Redwood. Five people did Deloitte know them. As a statutory auditor of the parent company, could Deloitte have known that this money has come to the subsidiary? Should Deloitte have known that the money has come into the subsidiary? Yes, should have. Huh, but if you have heard the thing carefully, it's a step down subsidiary. So why would Ravindran inform uh, Deloitte? Or should Ravindran inform Deloitte that I have got money? They are like similar to the Chanda Kochar case now. So, is it a possibility? That's all. That's all right. Concentration. Maybe. Maybe. Correct? Maybe they would have come to dawn. But accounts itself never got finalized. So, where is the question of consolidation? Two years. They have never closed the books. So, would Deloitte have known about this? Okay. The, the, let, let us play the devil's advocate. Deloitte did not know the money has come. Clear? So far clear? So that could be one of the reasons why uh, Deloitte would have said not even invoked that particular issue that uh, this 1.2 billion was. See, reading newspaper report is different. That is uh, something which is general. I am talking about legal reasoning, no logical reasoning, legal reasoning. So, please understand, step down subsidiary, there could have been a remote possibility of a Deloitte partner not having known that this 10,000 crores has come into the company. Who was the auditor of the step down subsidiary? It was a US company, no? so in all probability, I don't think it was because access of all this information is quite difficult because uh, in US, if it is an unlisted company, you don't get any data unless we really start probing or getting or something like that. Yeah, but 
What is very important is the second para in this slide. What does it say? Ravindran was a director of Alpha Inc. Now the moot question. Did Ravindran know that 10,000 crores came into the subsidiary? Without the board intervention, how can 10,000 crores come into the system? So, when you connect this whole thing, would you assume that Ravindran is lying? That the original investor is a ghost and nobody knows who the original investor is? As, as a CA, is there any possibility for me to find out? Okay, other sub, sub transactions are this money, out of this money, 500 million came into India. Out of which, 400 million went to Messi. That contract was around 400 million. So, you can connect the dots, but from a CA point of view, can you take ownership on this particular deviation or not? If not, who was the person who knew this entire story? So let's let's take the auditors away, right? Yeah. I mean, somewhere they will have to give them the benefit of work, right? Auditors out? Yes. Only the promoter in? Yes. Okay. So now the whole thing which is. Uh, getting dirty in this uh, Baiju stuff is now the case is going on Fudon looks like 40 plus 40, 80 million plus 1.2 billion is just getting added by the T, our, whatever you call it that is what is the recall that they are asking the company to pay and the defense is show me the original investor, I will pay all right, this is where the case is as far as the current situation is concerned. So, from who are you? Technically speaking, the auditor of the holding company can. See, if the accounts were finalized, then I go with you. Since the accounts are open, it never got closed. And fortunately, before closure, the statutory auditor press the escape button, they may not be part of the, what are, I am not getting into judgments, but part of whatever that 1.2 billion gap in the books of branches. Clear? So, now, these are all add on questions. Now, who should resign first? Now, you just saw this, right? June 22nd, the directors resign and immediately thereafter the auditors resign. Now, ideal, ideal, when such a situation comes up, please understand, even before the independent directors make an exit, it is advisable that the statutory auditor makes the exit. Lot of instances, it's not one or two. I mean, provided you have the data, you have the uh, knowledge that something went wrong inside the system. Clear? Now, <coughs> next question that you should ask is when should they ideally exit? Before the event, during the event, after the event. Now, if auditors do not resign on time, this is the cafe coffee day story. Now, understand this very carefully. This is what is the final order, okay? But what led to these investigations? And how could the auditor have stayed back? Now, there was a uh, whatever letter, I don't want to call it a suicide note. There was a letter left behind by Siddhartha, the promoter of the company. In that, there were certain sentences which were very powerful that led to the investigation. Clear? Now when the investigation started, now we have two bodies, 
which got into this whole thing. One is SEBI and another is NFR. That's why I showed you a resignation letter where some auditor has gone out. The moment SEBI started investigation, that person pressed the escape button. This is how complicated it is. Sorry for the uh, font size. Mysore Amalgamated Coffee State. This is the subsidy. Now, you said consolidated, no? Close to 2500 crores. This is the chart prepared by SEBI. Huh? Fantastic investigation. Were rooted through entire subsidy. The breakup is also given. Which company took how much money and when? Clear? This was the day at the time of the particular event. So, what was this order and why is this order very powerful? Multiple things happen. Whenever a case is going on pertaining to NFRA, one of the important lessons is do not fudge the records during investigation. Clear? Now, Understand this clearly, which is diversion of funds of 3,535 crores. Look how they are even quantified how much of diversion happened in Kafi. Now, this diversion could have happened, could it have happened without the knowledge of the statutory auditor? Impossible. That is why I am trying to connect the Baiju story with the CCD story. Baiju's, I can still take a defense. In CCD, I cannot take a defense because you are made a party to these transactions. Okay, now from a NFRA point of view, from a SEBI point of view, they have all decided that it is through the subsidiaries. Now, understand this. Very critical. While the whole thing was happening, the auditor made an attempt to deceive NFRA. Now, that is where out of vengeance. The order has come in with a serious blow up, gone. Same as what Sen was treated in uh, Deloitte's, this auditor was treated in Coffee Coffee. Clear? So, related party transaction itself was to the tune of 6,958 crores. This is another demon inside any company. Related party transaction. Now, from a related party transaction, all that law says is, please go ahead and do whatever you want, except the extent that please disclose. That's all. That too, under the uh, listed company concept, please understand. Nobody says you cannot do a related party transaction. If you do a related party transaction, disclose. This is what is important from a related party transaction concept. Okay. Now, that disclosure did not happen. Okay. Now, this is what is the listing out of various amounts which were siphoned off, uh, 130 crores, 69 crores, so on and so forth. Now, what was the grounds on which the auditors were witnessed? Professional misconduct for having tampered with the documents of the company. Point number two, professional judgment that is pertaining to the related party transaction. Clear? And of course to maintain independence. Now look at the penalty. It can wipe off the firm, right? This is monetary penalty and then there was also a penalty which debarred the auditor from getting into the profession, which I just showed you in the previous slide, right? Now, clear? Now, next is again, Adan. Now, this is another interesting case of how Deloitte and when did they submit the resignation? How did they submit the resignation? Are they connecting it to that particular report or not? Okay, now, please note this point. Uh, the auditors identified 3,871 crores as a related party transaction. Clear? Now the gap between that uh, Hindenburg report, Hindenburg report and Deloitte's was in that report they named the party. Here they have not named it. I mean, from whatever we could gather, this is what it is. And that is where the catch was. Clear? Now, 
uh, following order. Outcome of this is the resignation of the lights and the reason cited is the company, you know, what they are saying because they are not subject to orders of a substantial number of subsidiaries. Why? Because related party transactions were in the subsidiaries. So, the cover up, I mean, looks like it's a cover up, huh? which is for not having name is to the extent that we were not shown the subsidiaries or we were not part of the subsidiaries accounts. But the governance school says because the Hindenburg report had more data than what an auditor should have had, was that the reason behind the resignation? Clear? So, so where you exit, how you exit, what you exit, very important because the connect can be something different, you may still get out. But finally, I mean, in whatever books you have written that you have not responded to the whole thing properly. Yeah? Now, this is another uh, thing which is happening. What if the auditors resign for? Because the ND resign. Now, these are all things that you need to look up. There are companies where three independent directors, CEO and CFO resign. The auditors also resign. Which means these are companies which you should look out for red flags. Something is going to bust. Nobody knows what is going to bust. Huh? I mean, it may be even a false alarm. Okay, governance is not in sync. Most of the cases, this is what is happening. Then, uh, unable to divert time, this is what I just gave you some of the examples on the resignation. Now, who to address the resignation letter? Very important. Because Today what is happening is whether I should address it to the audit committee chair or should I address it to the board of directors or should I address it to the shareholders. You have three options which are available. Whom will you address the resignation item? More so in the listed company scenario. The shareholders, the board of directors or the audit committee chair. Why board of directors? See, if you address it to the shareholders, the issue is there is nobody who is going to act on behalf of the shareholders. Even though the shareholders are the final authority who are appointing you, there is no face. There is no single person to whom you can write. So, ideally the resignation letters are all, uh, you would have seen, it's all written to the board of directors. Why I bought this point is, Writing it to the audit committee chair, is it a correct, I mean, or is it a valid option or not? Now understand, from an audit committee point of view, audit committee recommends your appointment and it goes to the board. So, please note, the best thing to write on a resignation letter and the safest thing to write is the board of directors in general. Now the next question is, should you get an acknowledgement on the resignation letter or you just send the letter and it is all full and final? Should accept. How does the company accept? See, 168 for a director is very clearly mentioned. How this resignation has to happen, who has to accept, all of those things. But for a statutory auditor, there is no real directive, right? So how do you track this? whether your resignation has been accepted or not. Question mark. I mean, today you don't have any mechanism. Next. Can the board of directors not accept your resignation? Is it possible? I mean, from a statutory auditor point of view, you are supposed to be the super uh, humans out there. So, is it possible? The board saying, I will not accept it. Chances are there. Not accepting or postponing your exit. See, understand friends, it's a contractual obligation. Unfortunately, today if you really look at it, there is no real-time contract that gets, it just says, Messrs. ABC and companies, chartered accountants, come on, will be appointed for a period of five years. 
termination clause is there? Where is the termination clause for a shattered auditor? Why is there no termination clause for a shattered auditor? A director when they join, they have appointment letter for a time to Think, I, I am not saying, you know, there are ready made answers to, to most of Because 64 resignations in 23 days is an alarming thing out of 7,000 companies, listed companies in this country, which is almost 1%. One, yeah, 1% of the entire population of listed companies. Think, high time you think about the proper contractual agreement between the company and yourself don't go by that one paragraph my dear friends it's a waste actually today you cannot survive with that one paragraph i'm telling you things are getting murkier things are getting bad so one discovery is after seeing all of this every ca firm that is appointed should have a full-fledged contract entered into between the company and us. The big fours and all they have, but I'm just talking about the next uh, type 2, type 3 and all that. Please ensure that you have a contract. And most important, termination clause in that particular contract. Those days are all gone. Once you are in 5 years, nobody will touch me. Today, everything can go wrong, right? So, things are becoming very dynamic. Please start looking at the contract. Okay? Then, that is an enforceable contract. It is not an unenforceable contract. It is an enforceable contract. So, this is how your resignation pans out. So, coming back to the question, can the board say no? Yes. The board has got every right to say Till you complete the audit, I will not allow you to go. Technically speaking, if you don't have the defenses in place from a contract point of view. Okay. Ha, how will you send the letter? Now, these are all things. Please be careful. There are things in the Companies Act which directs how to uh, service of any uh, communication, right? There is a section. Only based on that you are supposed to be communicated. Sometimes it just becomes very adult, oral, liberal and all that. No. Next. Effective date. Now the biggest question is immediate effect. How we can put a date to the effective date in our resignation letter? All of these things are very, very important going forward. It's very easy to say immediate effect. What if I don't relieve you with immediate effect? Can you just walk away? No, it's not possible. Time that maybe companies start suing the companies, no? very simple, it's, I mean audit forms. It's not that you are above law or whatever. Things can take a ugly turn. Clear? Now why I'm telling all this is because at the time of signing off, at the time of taking up the transaction itself, you know what you are getting into. So, where is the question of leaving halfway and then running off? Which means, as a CA firm, why did you not do a proper due diligence? Like, four auditors changing in a period of four months. Unbelievable. Which means, every CA firm which is coming one after the other has not done any due diligence on the company. Clear? See, where I am coming from is all these experiences is, Please do not accept something just for the heck of it because there are more mysteries in the company than, you know, the payoffs. You know, so just because somebody is giving you a remuneration, don't jump. Now, this is what I ask. Should the board approve? Board has to approve. You cannot get out without the board approving your exit. It will still remain. You know, you, you cannot, you would not have taken your name off from that. Uh, list. Okay. Now, what can go wrong? These are all the things that can go wrong. Uh, can resignation be withdrawn by auditor? Once you resign, can you withdraw? Suppose then you get into good uh, and that fellow says, hey, boss, please don't leave me alone. Yeah? Can you withdraw? 
Sure. Before we file the daily degree, we can. Any time before you file the daily degree, you can withdraw the resignation. What if you are a listed company and the information is already communicated to the stock exchange? Can you pull back? No, I still would say the same logic, which is what is the astra out here is the form. You can still pull back. Okay. You may come under like if the stock stock prices are crashing, like I just told you one percent and all that, it may reflect badly, but possibilities are next is can the board revoke the resignation? That's what we were just saying. No. It can only delay the exit. Okay, can the board postpone the resignation? Yeah. So don't think immediate effect means I resign today, tomorrow I am gone. No, 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 no. It doesn't happen like that. Okay. There are provisions which are just uh, put down in the uh, uh, slide for you to go through, which is section 140. Okay, now I go to 1%. Now, 1% is a story where there were multiple auditors who changed their hats. Now, for example, uh, 2018, this is what it is, Watley Boy and Purohit. Then there was one Mera Goya, which was on August 2nd or whatever. And then if you see, uh, uh, you know, suddenly there was a rise, there was a fall. See, where this whole thing comes from is the due diligence. Absolutely, there was no due diligence conducted by all the three or four firms which onboarded as statutory auditors of 1%. Okay, with the dates, May 26 is when Deloitte resigned. Okay, now if you look at it, from May 22nd to May 30th, you know, the share price slipped up by 44%. Imagine, I mean, it may be for various reasons, but it is cited that because of resignation by Deloitte. This is where I told you. If you are a listed company, there is a stock market price. After that, can you withdraw it? It would mean that you have rigged the prices of whatever it is, you may get into some other problem. Okay. Then, uh, Mera Boyan, 27th May, July 8th, within one year they resign, and then you have another auditor coming in place. Now, every time there was a change, there was a price discovery which happened in the stock exchange. Okay. Now, uh, again, finally there was one uh, battle boy which said that there was lack of uh, cooperation, but the real reason was this. There was a big time, uh, you know, investigation by SEBI because there were too many holes in that company. Now, that is where my question to you is, why did all these four firms not, I mean, this is what we have done now. It's a post-mortem which we are bringing it to you and showing it to you. Don't tell me that in 2018 when uh, the big four, one of the big four when they onboarded, they couldn't find all these holes. You are supposed to. Don't get in and get out after an issue. Yeah? See, reputation matters. I mean, all said and done, you may still have only four audits. But if the four audits are good, you should be happy. Not like this. I mean, you saw majority of the slides that are put, I'm only mentioning one form. Just, I don't know. Very bad. So, basically this is what was the penalty, the outcome of that SEBI uh, order. Now, if you look at the uh, penalty, all the company people were uh, penalized. Now, the biggest thing which happened in that company was the GST fraud. Clear? So, that was the last bit where they, the last of the auditor resigned saying that I can't continue and then got out of the system. This is a beautiful case which says, when should you resign? Before, during, after. Now again, please understand there are a lot of these unknown, unknown. No, I, mean, I, start, I know I started to it's so tough. Very hard for, it's easy for me to say, but it's very hard for you to realize. These are the common reasons for resignation which I cited, which is pertaining to you know, whatever I put up in the slide. Now, the real problem for resignations is uh, if the auditor resigns just before the finalization of audit. Now that is where most of these cases we have found it's a huge problem on hand. 
whether it is by juice, whatever, you know. Now, is the ROC doing anything? Now suddenly, you know, this is what, you know, what is the ROC doing about it? Yes, any ADT3 that you are filing today is under scrutiny. Please understand. Said, at least if you are a listed company, the reasons are up, like uh, how I pulled out all the resignation letters and I showed it to you because it's all public uh, information. Private companies is under the scrutiny of ROC. Okay, SEBI. I gave you enough number of cases on what SEBI is doing, what uh, NFRA is doing on this, in this way. Now there is one more case which you can just track, which is uh, Wakarni. Okay, this is also another, this is the Nero Modi scam stuff. Now, if you look at this particular uh, case, 2018 case, now PwC again is the auditor of the company which said information of several matters pertaining to election books, bullion, jewelry business. Now, these were not revealed or shown or the company has not given it to us. That's one of the reasons why they cited and they exited from this company. But to Please note that point of time, whoever is connected with PC, PC is the parent company of Biram Modi which went into problems, independent directors and auditors got into problems. Okay, now there is another company, this is another Iki, whenever you have time, four auditors, five auditors, all of them just uh, uh, quitting uh, in very short uh, duration. And each one of them are giving uh, their own excuse for it. So understand, friends, what is the whole outcome of this whole analysis from a resignation point of view is most important. One, please do due diligence on companies before onboarding. That's the first one. The second learning is please have a structured agreement with the company. When I say structured agreement, please, with most emphasis on the clause pertaining to termination of your engagement. Clear? That is how you need to protect your back. Otherwise, it's, it's very difficult on the survival front. Okay? Now, any questions? Yeah, when, when I'm rousing, any questions? This is all in a minute quick face. Yeah. Some of the cases which are brought to you is pertaining to uh, the top companies. Okay. I mean, like this, there are resilient cases. So, what can be the statement in this uh, termination clause? You are saying it should be reflected in the termination clause. So, what kind of conditions you should put there? Ah. Any issues? Now, we have gone through so many resignations, right? What is hurting the statutory auditor is the governance related issues. Okay, so I would say that a separate clause pertaining to our termination will end the day we are aware of any governance related issues in the company. That's a very broad parameter which you can put in the termination. Would it be tenable in the law? Yeah. Because it's a so broadly, how would we uh, determine the date when you are aware to that it is? Means who will decide on the fact? You will decide. You see, today what is happening? There is only that one paragraph on the shareholder uh, meeting and then there is one paragraph by the board of directors. They just give you a resolution and then say, oh yeah, fantastic, come, you are onboarded. Where is the backup? Backup, say for example, we saw companies which were not giving the uh, books for uh, audit. There were companies like uh, the 10,000 crores. Why did the promoter not uh, uh, convey that particular 10,000 crore related issue to the auditors? All these are governance related issues. So during the resignation you are saying the person has to state also the reasons, yeah. specific facts, Correct. fact of the situation which has been triggered that they are aware of this misgovernance. Very much. Today that is the trend. Today that is the trend. No auditor today cites personal reasons to get out unless they are on a back foot or whatever it is. Otherwise, if it's a company which is really into problems, you have to sign the 
for independent director and short director. And that should be from immediate effect, or they should give some timeline between this termination close that if when they are coming to fact that some certain certain things are happening, not in uh, indesirable conditions or something. So the auditor should put some timeline on the boards, or some they should put. See, that is what a term or uh, a resignation of a statutory auditor is never overnight. Analysis shows issues of burning for more than six to nine months. There is continuous interaction. See, when do you resign? Finally, you give up, right? When do you give up? You say, "What this guy is of no use. He is not helping me. Let me put an end. Otherwise, I will." Wholesale member, right? So you don't want to collapse. No means I want. Uh, just I mean to say that he can the auditor put some condition with regard to the time frame in which the board has to uh, consider their uh, things. Means like that you said, na, that board can postpone the thing. Board can delay. Three months, yeah. So that time. ideally, what you could put this from your point of view, if the board decides to uh, terminate us. Then a minimum of three months notice is required to be given. That's all you get. I mean, nobody is going to keep for long. Three months. That's all it is. Otherwise, why I am telling you this is closer to the audit. See, typically you will find the audit firm getting only around August, July, August to the company, which is by September they will have to sign off, and that is when they find some big bomb being dropped, and they resign. Now, where will you go? Where will the company go and find an auditor in that place? So that is when the disputes can happen. That is where the problems can come up. That should be the sufficient time that uh, within that the board can either approve another or either you can finalize that. Yes, yeah, correct, correct. You will finalize, but with all qualification, huh? you can still stay back in the company, saying that. It will not come under the emphasis of matter. It will all come under qualification. I will put. I will close. I will go. That's the only condition that you are going to put, right? The company will say no. Then the company will have to hunt for a say. So, ideally, what I am trying to say, if there is a governance issue, it would it should be zero. Your time to leave. If it is there, then you should have three months, which will protect your interest. That is what I am trying to say. Today, you don't have any formal agreement which you enter. Acha, you are saying if there is gross uh, uh, misgovernance of the issues, yeah. then no timeline required. No, it can be with the immediate effect. Yeah, it should be in your favor. It should be in your favor. It can never be company's favor, right? And that is what are the cases. That is what the resignation which I just showed you. People don't wait. The moment there is a whistle blowing, the moment there is a problem, the moment a firm realizes that there is going to be an issue, they all so stop. the board. Don't have any liberty to postpone or delay. Should not. Should you not. should put them in the black hole. No? You should not allow them to take you for a, for granted and say no, you are finished and go. Why will you do it? Uh, so, it's, but if you have an agreement yourself, if you don't have with those two pieces of paper, nobody can help you. It will all be mutual, but nobody can help you. Contract. Yeah. So, see, uh, companies are all even talking about suing the auditors now, right? For whatever, I mean, putting them into a risk or whatever. So, why you get into all this? Today, it's all becoming commercial. Right? So, get into this. One is due diligence, another is contract. Without that, don't onboard into any companies. Before accepting the audit, you have to do the due. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please do that. I mean, the before entering into the contract. See, I do diligence when I say. Uh, see, today you it's are. It done prior. That prior, prior. It is <laughs> not after. So within 48 hours you should finish it off. You have Google. You have so many parameters, right? You have Sybil. You have Google. You have so many places where you can figure out what is going wrong, going right, and who else that you can read the statements properly. Cash flow. Just do an audit on the cash flow. You will get the real uh, situation of the company. Don't enter. Don't enter. Today it's all becoming a whole. Most of the thing information you can get from the website, profit share, and yeah, yeah. It's all the intimations and everything. Correct. Everything is available today. So, but but all said and done, that is what say. Otherwise, four auditors in that uh, Ikki company and all that. How it's a mockery, right? 
one auditor comes and three months where he goes, another auditor comes six months. See, it cannot. That means it shows on our institution that we have not done the proper homework on the company. And somebody was in a hurry to fill up that position. That we should avoid. So that is the only way we can avoid future litigation and all that. Yeah? Any other question? Yeah, so inadequate fees. Now this is another parameter which I told you. Very, very popular. Everybody is using today. Easiest way to get out. Simplest way to get out. Put it as the company is not in a position. See, that's where I said. If that fee was fixed based on a incremental stuff, you have agreed, sign the contract, you can never get out of the company standing this risk. So understand, I mean from a company point of view also it is good. Yeah. Uh, so these are all pertaining to uh, fees that you are not able to pay and then of course. Now, some of the NFRA orders, now where is this NFRA coming into play? 132 subsection 4 is what empowers them to go ahead and uh, question you, inquiry, all of those things. And uh, orders, uh, good orders, of course, I am just uh, briefly mentioning this. This is uh, Dalal and Associates, which is uh, uh, which is the order of uh, recent one, 2023, yeah, correct, 28.6, all are recent orders. Okay, now, uh, what was found is the FS did not contain disclosures mandated by India S24, credit risk profile and impairment laws was not disclosed. Now look at the uh, penalty, 10 lakhs. 10 lakhs of the auditor, 5 lakhs depart. Now, the moment it goes to NFRA, what I am trying to figure out is that particular person goes out of profession invariably. Okay, after the high code and all, that's a different story. I mean, for this 10 lakhs, how many more lakhs will you spend? So, that is the big question mark where you have to figure out. Now, look at this 50 lakhs on the firm. 10 lakhs of the individual and that individual is departing. Okay. The other one is uh, Narayan Prasad Swami. This is also April 2023 case and uh, again materiality, related party, all of these things. Now, in this they have been lenient. They have said 2 lakhs and debarred for 2 years. Okay. Lenient but debarred. See, understand. All the analysis, whatever we have done, shows to debar. Now this ADT3, of course, I am not getting into the details of ADT3. Now, failure to find this ADT3, there are consequences which you need to be careful. But the moment you find that, the change is over. Okay. Now, uh, adjudication orders. Now, since I said uh, it's a series of stories, now there are a few adjudication orders which I am going to place before you. Uh, it's becoming very funny. Huh? A company was penalized for not keeping dustbin outside. I, mean, I don't know to what extent we are going, but this is a real, real case which has happened. Dustbin. I have heard companies being penalized for not putting the GST number outside. Yes. That's the latest law. Okay, take it. But dustbin was a little surprising for me because what next I don't know because if we are going to go and penalize people on all of these factors then it is becoming a huge problem. The dustbin thing happened in Dehradun. Maybe it could have been through some Mahanagar Palike case but that was a very interesting stuff. Now most important please understand silly cases but you have to be careful. Whenever you file a document with ROC, careful, 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 my dear friends, there is a letterhead. That's the end of your story. Now, letterhead has got various components. All of you know that, right? Name of the company. The most important is registered office, email address, phone number. Don't worry if the email is not working, I'm, I'm, I'm unofficial I'm saying, but you can just put info at xyz.com. It's okay, but that email has to be there. 
Now all these over the most popular cases which are coming up is signature. Director, if you fail to mention the date of the director and letter it is a letter it, right? That's the first document that the regulator is going to see. Finished. So please be very careful. Right from the time you start putting that letterhead up in the public domain. Then never file it without the then. Now this I had already predicted long back. We used to do series of uh, sessions for this uh, this forum itself, which was a CSR. CSR started with explain. Then they said comply or explain. Then they said comply and explain. Then 2021 they said comply, explain or get prosecuted. Correct? So simple way of understanding CSR is done, done, done. Simple. Don't even get complicated. Dhan means you are wealthy. Dhan means you have to do charity. You have to. Don't ask me questions. Do you have to do charity? If you don't do charity, that. Clear? I'll tell you what a, what a case, man. I mean, unbelievable. How can... I don't know. If CSR is going to have this, then the next popular cases which are happening are, I mean in case, I mean I am not propagating it, but I am telling you, not appointing a company secretary. You had it. Just to go beg to borrow or steal a company secretary from somewhere, it is not worth violating 203. Latest. 5 lakhs, 5 lakhs, 5 lakhs, 5 lakhs. Company 5 lakhs, 3 directors 5 lakhs each. Simple, right? Look at it in a very nice social point of view. The same company could have paid it to a family. That family would have lived ever happily ever after. You know, what saying? We should not make them profit center. Every regional ROC has become a profit center. They are after companies to a great extent. But of course, for them they will say papi paid ka sawale. For also us it is a problem because we are getting into the crowd. Right? Now look at this CSR problem. Now very simple. We all know that you have to spend so much of money on CSR. If you don't spend that money, then the balance money you will have to transfer it into a separate bank account. Clear? So far, clear. No, absolutely no problem. So this company was required to transfer 14 lakhs 50 thousand rupees into a separate bank account. Company defaulted. All these are gang sections and all that. Now look at this. So what is the penalty? So for not remitting 14 lakh 50 thousand rupees, it is not not spending, huh? it is not remitting it into a bank account. See friends, there are two things. One is called spending. If you have not spent or not willing to spend, that is a different case. This is, you are just supposed to transfer that money into a separate account. So, for not transferring the 14 lakh 50, company landed up paying 36 lakh 50 thousand. This bank account is a big, big problem, huh? Section 42. Oof! How many companies you need which are paying because the penalty is 2 crores. Penalty is 2 crores. So you cannot escape at all. Be very careful. There are three sections which require this bank account. One is dividend. Don't take dividend for granted. The days are there. CSR. And the third one is section 40. Right? 
all the three requires you to open a bank account and the only legislation in the world which will punish you for not opening your bank account is Companies Act 2013. Now, the next is of course, uh, oh yeah, my god, this is another, this is relating to a registered office. Now, how did the ROC find? Nice actually. No? So, ROC wanted to send some law letter, which is a show cause notice. They wanted to send. Every time they sent, it returned back. Now, look at how the case became completely different. So, when three times the letter came back, it was established that the company does not have a registered office. Got the point? The way, see, when does this happen? Very simple. An entrepreneur wants to incorporate a company overnight and that fellow gives his house or whatever on name lending basis. Then that fellow forgets and then moves the house. Then nobody tells that fellow, please, you have to file that INC 22 or whatever to change the register office. You are stuck. Point number one. Point number two. This is the most popular case where a professional rents their office to the company. The third thing is, there are post box services today available. But the bigger demand in all these is, today if you have to file a form, you are supposed to take the picture of the register office. How oh, unfortunate. One chair should be there, one table should be there, and one human being called director should be sitting there. <laughs> no, but if you give it to some brilliant guys, they do some photoshop and all that. I am not saying that. You are not supposed to do, but. So, if a company ideally has two directors in France, to file this INC 22, that person has to catch a flight, come to India, pose for that photograph, and go back to France. This is how least expensive compliance can be. Correct? No, I am not saying. I mean, are we not stretching this compliance a little too much? Look at this. Now, so section 12, very simple. They are saying that you should have a registered office and the uh, notice, whatever, you know, all those uh, uh, theory related is available there. Now, because this was a uh, bouncing of this. Uh, Register post, there was a levy of 2,53,000. Very considerate, no? to a great extent, it was very considerate. They made a penalty of 2,65,000. Now, there is another one which is, uh, uh, this is another advantage which is small company. Now, this is a big advantage, this is 42. But the same 42 for a small company has a small penalty. I just told you, okay, if you are asking me the difference between small company and big company, it's a very thin difference, okay. That threshold limit of uh, the 250 crores or whatever, you just cross that and then you become the big company, okay. Now, the penalty which is levied, there is separate uh, thing available, which is uh, clause available or a section available, where the maximum that's capped is only 2 lakhs. Where is 2 crores? Where is 2 lakhs? This is the big difference when it comes to a capping of penalty. While on that, last time when we did this uh, whole series, we had discussed an issue pertaining to 92 and 137. We dissected so many orders and adjudication orders are for 137 and 92. Now, here what I had told last time is very simple. The moment you get a show cause notice and if you respond to that show cause notice by filing the accounts and annual return, zero penalty. Zero. But, if you cross the deadline and then go ahead and file this document, it can run into multiples of lakhs. Clear? That is how bad. 
See, now there are two levels, right? One is adjudication order, another is RD level. Now, uh, if there is an adjudication order which is not very favorable to you, you go to the RD and seek uh, whatever their blessings and try to bring down the penal provisions. That's the only solution available, but it depends on how big that adjudication order the value is because time, money, everything matters. Okay, so. Uh, so basically, uh, this company, there was only a penalty of 3 lakhs to the company and 50,000 to the officers. Here, that is the advantage of being a uh, small company. Now, this is another section 42 case. Now, again, the penalty, if you see, is at a very uh, smaller range than the 1.5 crores. The last time, what we saw, Valley Mock company and all that, which paid huge penalty of 1.5 crores, which is 50 lakhs per director and all that. That is not the case in these companies. Okay, I'll just uh, figure out if there's anything else. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Udyan Singh is what I, I covered. Yeah. So, that comes right from my side. So, if there's any doubts, questions, please ask. Sir, one thing, he, uh, when you said he, when auditor is trying to get out of the company, after knowing the some fact that something is wrong happening. So is there a responsibility on the auditor to inform to the ROC, stock exchange, central government, say Auditor to inform them? That's no, right. auditor gives the letter to the company. See, auditor is giving the letter to the board that they cannot continue correct, correct. because of certain facts. Now the facts are so sensitive that as per the company's law, it makes duty of the auditor that if they comes to know anything, they should inform to the central government, ROC or stock exchange, SEBI regulators. So, is it the duties of the auditors when they are coming to the some facts which are how to be informed to the regulators of the government? The only thing that I have come across is if there is a fraud. Only a fraud gets reported. Governance issue cannot be reported. It's, that is why it would be contractual obligation between the auditor and the board. Any fraud, you can directly fraud means what? They have quantified fraud, no. Status symbol of fraud also they have brought, no. More than a crore of rupees, if there is a fraud. Straight away go and report to whoever you want. The typically you will do it to... Uh, Symphoning of fund or diversion of the fund will be fraud? Yes. Yeah. So, that is what is the power which is available with the auditor to figure out what is a fraud. Now, in your perception, in your thing, if you think that something is a fraud, go ahead and report it. Now, that is what they expect you to do also. No? If you have not done that, so is the auditor has report. to be carefully while drafting the fact also because it will cast the duty, it means responsibility as well on the auditors. Because if they are stating some reasons of like that, no, but that is again a private letter. It is not a public letter which is going to them. No? It's a private letter which goes to the regulator. Regulator comes and does an investigation and then they figure out whether that is a real time fraud or not. Today, even independent directors are sending the letters directly, right? See, these two institutions, one is the independent director and statutory auditors, are appointed by shareholders. So, from these two point of view, According to me, even if they are spilling out something, they don't fall under the category of a whistleblower. You are doing it in the largest interest of the stakeholder. Clear? Larger interest of the stakeholder. So, anybody else, it will be considered as a whistleblower or, or something which has got leaked or whatever. For you, it is very important. You are going after somebody after the incident is of no Satyam. Clear. Satyam case is what is the starting point of all these fraud related issues and all that. So there the problem is they couldn't see. See there are two because things, right? right? The effect of it, you just uh, give it an example of the CCD. Even every auditor must be knowing that if there is a 3000 crores of rupees of the diversion within all the subsidiary, the funds are routing through. And if they are quitting, 
the company. So definitely they are they have the reason everything. So why they don't uh, did not inform to the ministry or no 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 you are not supposed to inform to the ministry. That case was you are supposed to inform through the disclosure. But it's a before finalization. If you are going out, if you are quitting before the finalization of the accounts, giving some these reasons. So their their duties and responsibility is that that should bring to the notice of the uh, this regulators and this. Okay. Now what happened to the Adani case? Simple, right? What did they say? You as an auditor said that there was a related party. Did you mention the parties? Did you give more clarification on who the parties were? No. That's where the catches. So this is like a commercial call, right? Men or the Sadhya. Right, I will mention something, but that will not be very clearly uh, visible to the arm army size. So you are advising that auditors should not go into informing these regulators unless there is something very serious, upfrontly uh, something is coming. No, first you will give notice to the management. First you will give the process is not you cannot go and say directly uh, inform the. You will give the management. Then you will wait for a reply. You will say that I, I want a reply within seven days. Then these guys will go around, board, lead, everything will happen. Then after seven days, you will be called by the audit committee. I am talking about typical district company scenario. Then audit com committee will give you a Reprimative. justification. Okay, you are not convinced. You write back. Board calls you next. Board gives you a justification. You are not convinced. Next you read the. So there is a there is a seek uh, correct you, you can't uh, directly write a letter and say that boss could double or uh, no no. But the auditor has to be carefully while giving the reasons of the resignations because it will ultimately will be the No no that is the last that on the response. Perfect. So the companies which have put governance related issues, they have put right when at the resignation the resignation letter. If you don't put that then whatever fight you have done between the audit committee board, you have been infighting, right? That will not be able to protect. So you have to put that reason. And whether you need to go to other channel or not, that depends on the scenario. Yeah, correct. Correct. How big the problem is, how big the hole is, you will have to decide. But from an institute point of view, from a law point of view, what they have stated is only one group. So, then what will happen as an auditor, you will look into the materiality uh, policy. Materiality policy will govern. For Reliance, one crore is fiddly sum, right? They would have a materiality policy of 5% of the turnover. Now, if the fraud is more than that, take it off. So, this is how. In the uh, real practical life, I don't think that any auditor has ever been form to any regulators or authority against their client. Me, that is the law no, relationship. They are aware of everything. Me, me. That happens with every professional no? because being afraid that what will happen to me next. But then, then after the investigation, the definitely the when the investigation will start, uh, so definitely the auditor will also come into the picture. Yes, yes. And then uh, debar. So, whether you want to be debarred or you want to continue with whatever. No, not only quitting, you will uh, take away from the responsibility or the or uh, Because you are getting out of the system doesn't mean that you have not been part of the uh, No, system. no, no, no. Getting out of the system is better than signing the balance sheet and getting out of the system. But if something are coming across the years of the things. Ha, that, that is it. Yeah. Legacy issues, you have to be careful. You, Correct. you will be accountable for the fact. Correct. And Correct. nothing happened within a day. Yeah. So something went, has come to your knowledge and you want to get out, but before that you also have to some to safeguard yourself, you have to as a, you have to act as a whistleblower. Correct. Correct. That will protect your future. But I think going by what he said, now the Baiju's case, the law, right? Submitting the resignation. If those two years audit was over, then I am written. Then you are caught. Right? Because 2021 when this whole thing has happened, 100 percent it would have come to the notice in the books, you would have. So that is what I am saying. Also, when the call has to be taken is very, very critical. Like I will tell you a very simple case. TCS. There was a recent uh, primary case. Correct? As auditor, are you bothered about it? Yes, HR. 
which is very good. Uh, are you bothered about that bribery case or not? As a statutory auditor of TCS. It's a government issue also. Yeah, we are taking a safe side, right? Who quantifies? No, means the auditor is not supposed to investigate into details expert, but they can if they have some certain things which you can say the governing of the organization or the companies. Where the defense is, I don't know how many of you have tracked the case. Company said company has not suffered any loss. If you note the statement. Company has not suffered any loss. It is a transaction between a third party and the employer. So governance may, you will have to split what is internal and what is affecting the company. So this particular case, auditor has got no role to play at all. Clear? So this is how you need to evaluate, right? I mean, it was supposed to be estimated at 100 crores. So auditor has not to go into the integrity of the employee. Correct. That is not my problem. That is not my problem. Yeah, they, they can go only to the financial Correct. Income. So since it is not hitting the balance sheet of the company, I don't have to look into that particular case. It becomes a governance case. Yeah. So this is how I mean, the dissection happens because of all of these uh, small little issues. But the, after hearing out all this, what is the important takeaway is watch out when independent directors are running away from the company. That means they have smelt something in the company. Point number one. Point number two, watch out when there is a en masse resignation of a CFO, CEO, directors. This is the second case which you have to look out for. You can be the last, but at least jump out. Don't get stuck like jet airways. That's what I'm trying to say. And then you have nowhere to go and you are there. That's it. Somebody else will script your story. Yeah. So any other question? No? Good to go? So thank you all for a very patient listening and uh, hope to see you soon with some of so, Thank you. session on this topic. On behalf of the committee, I present a moment to as a token of opposition in participation and support. I, C. H. and the Prakash Jain, Managing Committee member, sign off for the day. Looking for to meet at the next strategic meeting on 30th August 2023. Thank you. Good night.